talk about the different quarterback footwork for quick game versus drop back. Yep. Um, maybe play action for some of that. Yeah, it's kind of different footworks. Um, yeah, for us, most of you know, most of the things where he's got a really good shot just to get it out right now. Any of that stuff. Really, the only thing I'm kind of communicating to him is really just catch, punch, throw. I mean, that's kind of the, the put you back. Back, put Yeah, I mean, just the, how, whichever stance you got your guys, however the stagger is, or however you've got them set up. Um, but yeah, getting basically that half step, just a gather step, getting both feet in the ground and triggering right now. I mean, that, that's what we use in general, really, for everything that has that ability to get out of the end zone. And then from there, you're going to be working quick three for anything. So we got, we probably have maybe two or three, I would say, probably true staples of quick game. But it's some intermediate things where it's considered quick game in my mind, but he may progression read a few of these concepts. And then any time we get in those, it's going to be in the quick three mentality. Um, you know, draw back, just normal three, and then play action stuff. So, you know, really two kind of play action actions, protections we kind of uh, really, really hung on to or put our, hung our hat on the last couple of years is then some of the fold, full scheme. Um, and then obviously anything, think attached. Attached tight end or sniffer tight end sets, or just full zone seven net protections, you know, those two. But with the gap scheme one in particular, if that's something you do, you know, I love it. I think it's great. I think it's something you can call fast. I think you can do that in a speed ball setting and not be scared to do it. And, you know, what I'm getting at is if you do do that action and that protection, I think it's awesome. I think it sucks linebackers down. I think it's just hard for them, right? But I think you got to really hone in and work on that quarterback understanding where that launch point ought to be in those protections, you know. And, and really, on that protection that I'm talking about, you're weaker on the edge, and you've got to really drill and emphasize in meetings of hanging and pushing up into the pocket on those. I mean, that's just something you got to, in my opinion, you got to spend a pretty good amount of time on. And it's not necessarily the, the footwork and the technique of doing that that's as important. It's just willing and understanding like that has to happen or else you're not going to get a lot of yardage out of it. You start dropping back in that protection too often, those edges, man, they disappear in a hurry and you're starting to, you know, accumulate some sacks and some big negative plays. So, you know, that that's something I had to kind of find out probably about three years ago when I first started really doing some of that protection is, uh, you know, and, and drill work and things over the summer for us and our timeline and they really work, you know, so just, yeah, kind of touching on some of that, but uh, yeah, nothing, nothing too earth shattering, uh, kind of footwork wise too, I mean, <coughs> for us, we're going to teach drifting away or sliding away from zero blitz or, you know, uh, schemes where we know a guy's about to come free and we got caught with it, you know, so we're like today, we kind of worked that one of our ending periods of, of drifting over and getting the ball out and things of that nature. So that's something I'll kind of do maybe once every probably two or three practices and uh, just really kind of hone in on that for too. When well, you're heavy play action, what's, what's he doing with the ball as far as with the back? Is he just sweeping it and being near or is he uh, getting into a mesh or what all we got? Yeah, I mean, for us, for us, I still want him to present the ball. Um, on a few of these, it's going to kind of depend on the play a little bit, like some of the, whatever the concept is. If it's something where it's got a chance to get out pretty quickly, whether it's some quick game off of it or something intermediate, pop pass, whatever. If it's something intermediate, and we really want to present the ball. Um, and just something very simple that, that we found years ago, some of, trying to study some of the, best quarterbacks we thought, no matter what system you played in. But just who are guys that were consistently good at play action. And just kind of the one little small thing, common denominator you saw with all these pro guys and college guys when we kind of studied this was they would get their eyes and head down on the ball. You know what I'm saying? And not just this thing like so many people will do. Um, I'm, I'm 
true play action stuff, not talking off the edge. Uh, man, we got to really get our eyes in our head now. So that's something that we try and focus on uh, with our quarterbacks. We really get into that part of the game. But yeah, I, I'd like them to actually present and extend the ball out as opposed to just kind of getting small. There's going to be some things where you probably will get small if you really think the ball's going to get out and now. You may have to keep it in here a little bit more just so you're more compact and you can get the ball out faster. Um, but if it's things where it's a little more intermediate or down the field, I'd really like them to present. Yeah, yeah, one of the, um, I guess, man beaters I saw today was the slant under number two. Um, and then sometimes number two is going with fade, sometimes he was turning like levels on the dig. Mm -hmm. Is he reading that corner for a snap or is it just called? No, so that's a read. So that that little play used to be strictly, I mean, a man beater. You know, it was a third down deal. And if it wasn't man, if you thought it was man and they dropped the zone, you got stuck. And it was just one of those plays that purely was a man beater for a long time for me. And a few years ago, we kind of developed and really repped working that read for that slot that slot receiver of where he could turn it into a gander. And so what ended up happening is you at least had a fighting chance to keep the ball in play. They're showing, man, it's third and starting long. You've got this little man rub play on, and they drop out into the zone coverage. They have simulated looks, whatever. They drop out. And now all of a sudden what we've created is a high low. And we've gotten some pretty decent mileage out of that. We we repped it a bunch. It, it, Say a bunch. We repped it a pretty good amount at TCU in practice. You know, going against TCU runs a lot of the drop eight stuff. I don't know if y'all watch them, but a lot of the drop eight. Their guy does a great job. He was at Tulsa before, and he was just a pain in everybody's ass. And uh, Sonny ended up hiring him because he does a great job. He does a pretty great job. So anyway, that was something we tried to do against them, just because he's pretty captain. Yeah. So basically, he he's the he's setting the pick. He's setting the rub. The slot you're talking about and then yeah if he can win after he sets the row that's job number one if he can win over the top he's going to end up being an inside fade so that's what he's trying to do if there's somebody over the top whether it be a corner that's bailing out of there and cover three whether it's a safety that's over the top he's going to end up becoming a you know 12 15 yard gainer and so you know you put it in your head you've got a slam <coughs> coming from number one Number two, you end up kind of getting this bender action here. Yeah, it takes a little, it takes a second. You know, it's a down, it's a down part of it. It takes a second, but you give yourself a fighting chance of creating some of those high lows against some of these zones that you're going to see. And you know, today we had it was the first day that we'd done it out of that formation today. And uh, in seven on seven, I think maybe one in ten. I mean, we had really a couple of good examples of us bending it. Huge window right there, some big play opportunity. We need one, I think the other one we didn't get. Um, so that's just, yeah, that's something that kind of developed over time from purely a man, third down kind of play to something that's a little bit more all purpose in my mind. But it's good. I mean, you got to invest in it a little bit, but it's good. And it's one of those, if that's one of those plays, it's good out of two by two, three by one, empty, um, and then start getting into your bunch type of stuff. I mean, it's just it's pretty solid. I was talking to a few of the guys earlier. I was like, you can see today, I mean, really competitive. I mean, shit, we got a we got a half scrimmage tomorrow, and today was pretty competitive right before. So it's uh, it's fun. I mean. If you're a kid in our practices right now, like y'all can see, that was about as much indie today as week two. I mean, we just do not do a lot of indie with just our style and just the way we practice our practice plan. But today was a little bit more of that. But I mean, if you're a player, it's it's freaking competitive and competitive work things against the defense. A lot of group settings, group drills for us, and you know, I think our guys have a lot of fun. But it seems like the last couple of practices we've had some. Really, really, really good things, really big plays. And then after, you know, one out of every five plays, we have this, like, catastrophic bad deal. So we got to kind of find the happy medium there a little bit more as we go through the next couple of days. But it's fun. 
Can you draw maybe your favorite soap ice cream? Um, yeah, so I mean, today we, we, we hit one, I'll call it in the, the one we threw today, we threw a little third down deal just to get it in, and this is just our slow screen. There's nothing, nothing earth shattering at all. Just your, just your general slow screen to the tailback. You know, we were doing some run games, some RPO kind of motion stuff um, out of this fib kind of alignment today. So this was a little bit more right hash, you know, as you, you guys visualize this. So right hash. We have the tight end, you know, that center guy from the field, so the tight end is, is kind of falls under the, the fib formation for us. But, you know, we, we have a little H quick motion here, really just for window dressing. We were ending up, you know, a little bit of a P or just a ball fake here to our, uh, to our tailback coming from the left side, going left to right right here. And we were running off with these two receivers to the field, and it kind of makes it look like a pass. And, vertical stuff we saw from CSU or here we talk about. It looks like that and it also looks like some of the jet sweep game um, that we've shown a pretty good good bit of the last couple of years. So really a lot of eye violations and things going on here defensively no matter what they're in. And at the end of the day, you know, at the end of the day, he's gonna own the corner and we were just off of a two count getting out on the on the slow screen. Okay. And we were getting really just two Ultimately, getting two linemen out, the third one being a rack kill guy. Um, but typically, your center and guard are getting out for kind of sidewalk and alley, as we, we term it, walking in area as opposed to people and um, working that off of a two count. But, you know, that's a general screen for us that we'll just do out of standard two by two, three by one, but start to incorporate a little bit now out of some of these tight end sets and motioning and trying to gain a little advantage there and just having something that's simple off of some of this quick motion jet sweep sort of action. Um, so that's when we get third down, or, or it was second down, I think we called it. Um, it had a nice little chunk today, I think I just called it once. But, uh, you know, that, that's, that's, that's really the main, main staple for us in terms of running back. I mean, there's little different ones we'll do that are a little more specific, but that's like one of the general day one installs that you're gonna get in. What do you tell the tailback as far as once he gets up in there and he starts? Running? Yeah, so that's, that's man, that's been like an ever-evolving thing for me. How do you coach that exactly? And I feel like I've kind of like gone back and forth a little bit, probably like being some of you in here. But for the longest time, how I've learned it is once that tailback activates, I think that's number one. I think that's something I feel like we're, we're kind of on the right track is, you know, letting your offensive line know the timing, obviously, when to deploy. But, you know, more importantly is that tailback knowing when to activate. So we just tell him, hey, dude, you don't freaking activate until the whole line does. You're going to tell him, hey, it's supposed to be two count. But if they take forever, then you better wait. Activate when they activate. Because if you don't, you're going to be hosed anyways. Um, so that's some just some verbiage that we've given our running backs just from coaching those guys and some of these slow screens that I do think's helped. I think it's clear. I think it's easy for them to understand. And uh, I think that's helped us with, with the different number of running backs. Um, you know, but the thing that's been a little different for me in the last couple of years is watching, watching other people that have had success. Um, TCU had some, some really good success before I got there with this sort of screen. And they were coaching their guys to to have the ability to kind of settle or throttle once they cleared the line of scrimmage. So it wasn't necessarily, hey, get to this landmark and kind of just stop or throttle. It's more of a feel thing. Um, so once he clears and he gets through the line of scrimmage right here and he just felt like, hey man, I'm kind of, I'm clean, I'm getting through. then we would like him to show his numbers and start to almost throttle and just drift. Okay, and really two, two reasons why is now we can, in theory, tighten up our O linemen, the two O linemen that are deploying for the screen. We can kind of tighten their track up a little bit. Instead of having to be so lateral and balls to the wall to get width 
and making sure that they get to that alley and all that. We can make it a little more of a vertical track for them knowing that our tailback is a little slower. And now once I catch the ball, I got the ability to do what since I'm controlled? Get north now. So it's not just the whole throw it and he's trying to run to the sideline sort of screen. It could be, it could be, but if we get soft looks and we're clean, he's gonna be able to kind of catch this thing under control. He can catch it and now he can get north behind those big alignment that are a little bit more vertical mentality on their tracks and on their deployment. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Is the QB um, <coughs> flash faking and then kind of dropping and getting on his toes? Yeah, still, still, hey man, you gotta get ready to get big and throw over people. Maybe even potentially extend the play and kind of get into a little bit of a rollout and buy as much time as you can. I mean, all those things, yeah, we still got to work. Um, you know, but if he senses it and has a window, it's also a thing where he could just pop it off, you know, and put a little pace on it and actually put it on his body. You know, so it's, man, we, we, we've had some we've had some nice ones off of it. Like I mentioned, I, we kind of studied a lot of different people, NFL, and then like I mentioned, TC before I got there, they, they have a lot of production off of that. And I just thought it was an interesting way. And I just liked it because I just felt like you can mass produce it. I know that's kind of my little buzzword right now, but I felt like we could do that with more running backs. You know what I'm saying? We talked about this last night with some receiver screens. You can't throw a jailbreak receiver screen to everybody. Not all those guys can do it. It's a little bit of the same with tailback screens. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times you like to do it with just one dude but I just felt like for us at our level, this was something that a lot of those different body types at running back, you know, I'm a 190 pound guy, 175 pound jitterbug dude, and then maybe we had a 215, 220 pound running back. Like I just thought this was something that all those different body types, they could do this and, and be good at it. Um, so I kind of, I, I like that part about it. Coach, just wanted to ask a question. Um, today I was watching this so typically they're just looking I mean again I, lo I love all line do I know every single thing about it hell no um, but yeah I mean those guys they're just looking to get the play started right you know, and so I'm sure he has some sort of great verbiage and an initial key for him, but basically just looking for that edge, that side he's working to, wherever the screen's going, that edge. Those guys, man, D-lines in college, D-line coaches in college do a great job and people redirect. And screens are hard at our level right now, in my opinion. Um, kind of the running joke with some of the coaches I've been around the last few years is, man, it's a little different in the NFL, those screens, are, really, really good in the NFL. Well, why is that? Last time I checked, those guys get paid a lot of money when they get sacks, right? So they rush the damn passer. <clears throat> College ball, sometimes it's not as much. And uh, just because of cutting the box up and all the all the stuff we see at our, our level, some of those screens are tough, man. I mean, they're just tougher than they were, I feel like, several years ago. But anyway, I mean, yeah, he's gonna look for that edge and see if he can just get the play started and be ready for a redirect um, or a retracer. Um, and then from there, he Potentially add on and get up and play football. Yeah, else about this? Yeah, I was going to ask. really has a pretty tough job. Yep. For you, for you, what's his key? Yeah, I mean, we, we can do a number of different things um, with that Z in this example. You know, you could crack. You could go crack the first backer in the box just in case you did get man coverage. You know, and at least get the play started in theory. So, I mean, there's a number of perimeter things we can do there. But with this one today, with our defense, he was just going to own the corner. You know, and if you're man to man, easiest block, run him off, right? Um, so, just general perimeter blocking for him at this point. And again, if you ran this screen 10 times, I would think eight out of 10 times, this thing's going to hit vertically before it ever really gets out that wide where it should. Um, you know, and so that, that part helps the Z in this picture, right? It helps him. Uh, you want the Z to turn his hips first if he can, or are you straight up block? Try and get the defender's eyes to yes. turn? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. That's going to make his, his life easier, right? Right. Um, you know, but you got to be cognizant and mindful, too, of just all the cloud and cut corner and all the stuff that you just kind of see into the boundary. 
nowadays that you know you got to drill with that stuff obviously but yeah i mean you got kind of head up normal technique on you you know yeah you'd like to get up on them and make them feel like you're going to release or whatever and then kind of stop them from there yeah i mean that, that's that's what you want in the future for sure you go over what you like to do on the shallow uh like the the concept like shallow dig yeah, yeah. Yeah, just the uh, just the high low high low concept, shallow day concept. That's what I'm talking about. <coughs> yeah. That's all your diamond game. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, I mean, the, do do different things. You get to a lot of different stuff on the base ways. You know, I'll do it from two by two. One of the base ways for us. And two by two, one of the most basic formations, you know, for our system. Um, one of the ways that, that we like to do it typically is shallowing with, with an outside guy. Um, let him do the shallow. I think it kind of gives you some clean um, releases and some clean looks at some yes no's, some of the easier throws on this play. <coughs> you know, for us, if we were to shallow the X right here, that would by rule put our H on an out, okay? And he'd be a yes no. Our Z would run it out. Our Y would be the basic where he could potentially throttle. Our tail back with what we do most of the time without getting into tags and different stuff. He's running this little you know, check sit out of the box where he's getting a little bit of lift. And so he's helping us create that triangle with the shallow, the dig, and the tail back. And that, there's your triangle. Um, so one of the most basic ways for us, so you got two yes no's right here. All right, I can pick a side. They're giving me an easy look to the Z on the sail route. And then for the H, what this gives you doing it this way is it's a nice little man answer. It's a good, uh, it's a good way to actually throw that H in man, like in man free. And then anytime you start playing some of these four press teams, right, playing quarters, but they're locking on and pressing the outside guys, then this one's a killer. Um, they're, they're, in a, they're in a little bind here, you know, and so typically when you start getting the man coverages, quarterbacks are probably going to err on starting to the H in this example uh, to potentially get that yes, no. But beyond throwing one of those pre-snap, um, for us, it's, man, look to that where the shallow is going. Look to that apex defender there to the field. And if you feel like that shallow can get five, beat it. And that's, that's kind of how we say it to our quarterbacks. If that's shallow, you throw it to him, he's got a chance to get five yards, throw it to him. From there, they take that away. His eyes would go to the dig. The dig gets taken away by a backer dropping or safety driving down on him. He's going to get to that, that running back route there as the, the final option. Um, you know, you got to have a plan, in my opinion. You better check. You better have a plan if it's a side adjustment on what your hot is with this play. You know, you naturally got a, an option here with the shallow. Buying enough time and throwing that shallow, just running away from someone, or you better have some hot rules with your dig in this example without checking anything. I'm talking about pure hot. You just better have a plan with this this concept that way. Did he have the opportunity to like sit down? Yes. Yeah, he can or throw. Shallow. Or shallow. Yeah. Shallow's got to go. There's no read for him. It's haul ass, run as fast as you can, no matter what. No matter what. Uh, outside release versus. The dig. the dig, yeah, you need to teach that guy. He needs the outside release. Just to protect the shallow. Absolutely. Right? You start, you start stemming, and you inside release an apex defender to that to that end cutter, that dig, and all of a sudden that guy can play both, right? You can pass off the dig to the inside backer, and now he's sitting there just waiting on the shallow. So yeah, you got to force the outside release there by the dig. It's going to protect yourself. Um, but yeah, he certainly has the liberty to kind of throttle down once he end breaks, <coughs> once he end cuts. I'm not just at the top of the route. He's got to be ready to actually bring it in a little bit before he pumps for us. Uh, but a good one. Good one he can do from, from it's a different little way, but you can certainly do this concept for us out of three by one. It kind of turns into a little bit more of a drive concept there. Um, you know, but good, good play out of attached tight end, two by two. You can certainly can do it from some of those 12 sets, probably like I showed you earlier, I mean, a little bit. From, from those sets as well, but yeah, 
nice, nice, nice play, good red zone play. You start tagging posts and start getting big posts for quarters, or you start getting kind of in that, you know, 20, maybe 15 yard line, kind of marching down there, and you start tagging posts, and now you're really working all the levels of the end zone and working that actual zone. That's a pretty standard one as you get down there against some people um, that I think you can get some mileage out of. Tagging which guy is the shallow? Yeah, yeah, for us, yeah, on the play call, we're tagging who the shallow is, and then based on that, everybody else knows what we have. Yep. Yeah, so if you call this play shallow, we would call it eight shallow. Everybody else knows what we have based on that. Do you, uh, do you keep Aaron away from Sting? Sting. What do you mean by Sting? Like I mean, I've like heard of Sting. We can love to run Sting, so double, one side of the two big posts. This thing, shallow. that thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a great play. It's an awesome play. Had, uh, yeah, obviously he's had some success with it. Um, <sighs> you know, a lot of people are starting to probably do it now. We've done it the last few years, had some big plays. I mean, you just gotta, it's a great play. It just takes a second, right? Yeah. Um, What's your touching points for the sting route? Yeah. And what's the landmark to when is where is he going under and when is he going to get up into the into the void? Yeah, for us it, it there is some there's definitely some feel to this, right? I mean there's no like hard set rule. It's gonna be that way every single time. It's not one of those routes. I mean you gotta have a guy that's in my opinion like one of those savvy type receivers that understands space and things of that nature. So in general you're really just trying to get past uh, the first backer. So if I'm coming from the left and I'm running that route, once I get under, I got to truly sell shallow. That's what's going to get them to pass off, right? And in, 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 all that stuff. I got to shallow underneath that first backer. And once I get through that first backer, then it's kind of game on. Now I got the ability to trigger, pull the string and hit it. But that's kind of been our main coaching point is making sure that you get through one inside backer before you just take it right now. Have there been exceptions? Of course there has, but that's kind of the general teaching for us with that route. But typically, you know, that's one of those routes, like it's not all bad if the guy running that route is one of your slower guys. It almost times up better. You got a real fast guy, that maybe not, that might not be the guy you want to do it. And it just through practicing this and seeing it with different <coughs> people and doing our different personnel groupings, like. That's one of those that it just kind of works out a little bit better if it's honestly not just a straight, fast guy. Um, I know it's kind of weird to say, but it's true. Um, I'd say you can't do it with fast dudes. It's just in general, I think you, you can have some success with those dudes that maybe aren't as fast. It kind of sells them better. That's a great play. Try and protect it, man. <laughs> it takes a second, but it's a... Damn, that's a hell of a play in seven on seven, though. I tell you what, <laughs> we love that play in Skelly. <laughs> Coach, can you talk a little bit about your backside concepts on the game? Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, it's it's slants if we can. I mean, that's still like the day one in here. We're in slants and, and trying to comb through that and what the actual rules are and everything. I think one, like one we saw, we saw today, if, if y'all are here, is just simply creating a high-low backside. You know, we had, we just had an old star route, corner, spot route, arrow, like everybody in here runs. And then creating a high-low or just a cover two answer, really, at the end of the day, in general, a cover two answer. to create a high low for cover two, cover three, things of that nature. This is gonna be a good answer for you. We were motioning the back today, just trying to give the quarterback an easy read on which side to go to. You know, but if we found some different ways to kind of get to this, you know, whether it be in stack, maybe doing it from a switch release, but it's the same concept. You know, this has been one that's Nothing again. I'm not reinventing the wheel here, but that's just one that we incorporated today that you saw, and that's one that we like. I like it too. You 
know, for corner schemes or safeties that starts really driving down on that dig and all of a sudden you do a little stutter and it's a double move, like just kind of some nice and easy things off of it. Um, you know, one, one we've done a little bit lately has been, and it could be on the back side of this, this concept right here, but hit a few big plays last, last few years with this is it's kind of unconventional you can do it out of two by two you can do it from three by one but at the end of the day this is going to be a man answer but it's kind of all purpose enough and it times up enough to still be you can work it in zone okay that's all i'm going to show you at the end of the day we're getting in on a quick kind of end cut i mean that's about a six to seven yard route right there we're going to dive down inside 100 percent down inside the lease we're really just wrapping. If there was a little backer sitting inside of them, we would just go right behind them and just shade them. And then what our inside guy's doing is initially he's a little bit of a tempo up the field just to kind of hold his defender. You can imagine, you know, you're getting the typical man look that we see. He presses on the outside, off on the inside in the slot. And so what we're creating here is what we're trying to do is we're trying to make it appear like so many people will do is that. For man coverage, for cloud, just so they can rip it out there right now, get a nice little natural rub, and you throw this thing, right? Well, that's all good, but a lot of times what happens is you don't get the rub that you want, and this guy may be a little tighter, and he just comes over the top and smokes you for a three yard gain, okay? Um, and so what we kind of <coughs> found and started to do a little bit is off of that, is create this where it looks like that same release that I just drew. It looks like that initially too for the uh, little outcut, and we're bringing this thing out and we're coming right back in. And so what it at the end of the day, what it's really creating is just kind of a sexy way to run double slants. I mean that's that's ultimately what it's doing. But because of the timing, you can truly read this thing. The X, for this <coughs> example, if I'm on that side as a quarterback, I can really go x to the h you get double slants like you better be right and that thing better be on time right like it's almost a way to kind of <coughs> like progress read that i can go one to two you know on this little kind of inverted concept we got going on right here but i just think it's a nice compliment like i said we've had a few really big plays the last couple of years with this and it's kind of been a nice little new wrinkle for us on some backside stuff just a good pick play too. I mean, just a nice little third down deal. I've said you incorporate this out of three by one, and now all of a sudden you got a new little pick play. Other than your slow screen, what are ways that you got involved in the The back? Yeah. Man, just involving them a lot in free release stuff and, uh, you know, different screen games to motion him and whether it's, you know, just swing passes where we're blocking for him, incorporating him on things he can do in empty. Um, jet sweeps, you know, I think like on one of those first clips I showed you tonight, we had a little just kind of arrow screen that we could get to them incorporated in some man coverage. I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of different ways I could, you know, tell you right now, you're going to have a good chance of getting in the ball, but just simple things that, that we already kind of do, you know, without getting just too crazy and trying to manufacture a bunch of crap. It's just think of him as a receiver and how would I get my receiver involved, just think of it that way. But um, yeah, just trying to involve him quite a bit in some pre-release stuff or things, or if it is a six-man protection where he's running a real route, and not always just the check down. You know what I'm saying? I mean, running some some true routes, you know, angles, options, um, you know, whatever you call it at your school where they release and they're just running like an outcut. You know, instead of it just being an arrow, I mean, really get out there and vertically set that guy up and square him up to where you could break in or out, or you, that defender thinks you could, and you're sticking your toe on the ground and truly running a real route. Um, yeah, I mean, nothing, nothing too crazy there. But we just try to involve him a bunch where he's just not always in protection and going seven man pro all day. You know, things where he's actually going to have an opportunity to get out. But empty, jet sweeps different ways to get them swing screens, probably the easiest things.
say you drew up, are you asking the agent to drill up the corner or something? Or no. Or are you just saying just, just the route will just be natural? Yeah, so I mean, again, if you just, if you just, I say bro, just kind of more of a, a man answer, but you know, we get that leverage right there in man to man. We're clearing out right now, and just because of this, you're just unsettling that defender. I mean, you're not truly picking him, no. Um, but it's just something where we feel like we're creating a little separation, you know, like a big play. Could he, uh, could he run like what, what we call snake or some people call it worm or that kind of thing? Is that H? On that? Yes. Like give him an option, you're saying, of breaking in or out? Well, no, just running at him and then, you know, pivot and turn and then come to inside. Oh, yeah. We, we call that snake. Uh -huh. or, Would that work? Would that route work yes. with what I drew? I yeah. probably. I mean, probably so. Probably so. Yeah. I mean, that may be easier for you to actually make that cut. That cut might be easier than what I drew. Um, but yeah, I think you could probably time it up where it would work. Yeah. Yeah, I think so for sure. Because a lot of people will do the route you're talking about. You know, you see it a fair amount in the red zone or the goal line. Right. Like that's one of those. Right. You think they're running out, and they bring it back in, right? So I mean, I think you could totally you incorporate that. that. Pivot and turn it back inside, push the way you're at. Yeah. Back inside. Yep. And usually, I mean, nine I think, times out of ten. I think you can totally do that. that. Yep. I think totally. <clears throat> Could you go over um, on your off the, the RPO? You know, you went over it last night. Okay. The lead in. Yeah. The okay. stick draw deal? Yeah. Yep. General the quarters, four one box, base, base, defense here. You know, again, for us, O line, obviously four down, incorporate four down here, they're gonna take the box. They're gonna take the five defenders, quarterbacks are responsible for the six defenders. Okay, so in this example, the quarterback's guy is that Mike linebacker. Alright. So again, if the quarterback, even with a five-man box right here, if he's got enough space just to throw the stick. Throw a quick out if you're doing it that way. Okay, if we're kind of getting into the old school true stick right here. If you got any of those throws that are easy, take it. Okay, and then based on whether or not Mike stays out of the box, I can reset and activate him and draw. If Mike backer blitzes. Okay, he comes from depth. This is where it gets into a little bit of feel. That Mike's coming from a lot of width right here. We love to throw it, but if he's coming from enough width, you still are going to have an opportunity to get this draw underneath, right? So it just kind of becomes a judgment on how tight he's coming. <coughs> it's one of those deals. Um, you know, so I mean, yeah, I mean, that's really it. Our X is blocking. He's going to block for the run. A lot of people, you can incorporate the single receiver on a route if you want to. Um, for us, at least, roll, he's going to block. He's going to block for the run, for the draw. Um, you start getting a six man box. All of a sudden, he's bumped in, safety's rolled down, and you got three over three sort of look. We start getting that. You still have leverage to throw. You still may have a throw with just this stick concept. I mean, it's, it's still likely. Um, whether it's just raising up, throwing a fade versus press, you know, or whether you got any sort of leverage for those two routes. If you do, then great. You still got an opportunity to throw it. Uh, beyond that, you got to get ready to check um, because you're in a dead play here. And so, like I mentioned last night, you can check totally just check routes, check a whole new pass play, check a run that you love. A lot of people will just simply make it a quarterback lead draw, and uh, now you got six for six. You got the running back leading up, and you got you got six for six. Did you get the quarterback to do it? Did you make it lead draw? So that'll be that'll be more of a game plan thing, you know. I mean who our quarterback is, like last year with Duggan, hell yeah. Let's do the lead draw with that guy. Um, 
So, I mean, a lot of it depends on who it is and just what you feel like is a, a fair play for you against that defense. But that, that'll definitely be a game question. Right? Okay, this week, this is our check. They're going to know. We're going to practice it all week. Uh, that's where we go. Do you always do the tailback away from the? No. No. No, you can do <coughs> tendency breaker. Maybe you had something scouting them that you like it four strong. Maybe that helped your look out. You know, if you're four strong, maybe that helped you with a, uh, with a five-man box. And just an example. Yeah, I mean, no, you totally could switch that up. It's not like it's always back to week. You know, a lot of people like to just as a tendency breaker, do it from pistol. You know what I'm saying? Um, they're probably not expecting that. If he's in pistol, probably not expecting to stick draw. I wouldn't think most of the defenses are, so I think it's a pretty simple one you can incorporate with pistol also. If it's a five-man box, No. Like I said, if he still has leverage to take one of those gimmies, he definitely can. If he's got a layup where he can throw it and he knows he's going to get a completion, obviously take it. But, yeah, I mean, by rule, by numbers, absolutely. It's a good one, man. Right, right. You know, another simple tag, a lot of, I feel like a lot of people don't do anymore is instead of stick, you may have something against a, a team where just simply a, a bubble screen, an arc. And it's just very simple football for your quarterback. Hey, dude, if you can throw the arc to the trips instead of stick, just put an arc or a quick screen if you like the outside screen. But just, hey, dude. You got leverage numbers, throw the screen. Otherwise, hand off draw. I mean, that's still a very simple one. And it's not very hard for a QB that maybe if you don't have the brightest guy in the world, somebody can, they can manufacture. That, I mean, that's one that we still use. Whether, whether we have a bright quarterback or not, that's, uh, that's a good one. That's a good one. It's kind of a good little third down deal because you just feel good about it as a, as a play caller that on this third down, bubble with the draw. Kind of no matter what they do, you feel like and without getting into man. I mean, just normal defense, zone defense on the third down, you feel pretty good that you're at least putting the ball in play. You know, you're not throwing this low percentage throw or something. You feel good that it's going to get in play, and we'll see what happens. Um, I just saw a lot of um, squeeze stuff with motioning and stuff mm -hmm. yesterday. I would think that's kind of a tendency. What do you think? What else do you like out of squeeze? Um. I mean, there's definitely some run game that that you got to be willing to do, and I think at times the run game can get a little, in my opinion, unless you unless you major in it, and get a little expensive just because you're in squeeze and the box gets a little jumbled and it's a little harder to tie D. I feel like for your line, I think that's some of the challenges you see with that. But I think you got to have enough run scheme to just keep keep people keep people honest and it's just not always hand with motion and throw a quick screen or throw a quick game. Um, but I, I like some some downfield stuff too. You know, I think downfield, whether it's verticals, cross, I mean, staying, I mean, whatever, you can get to all of that from squeeze. You know, and then I think, I think it's a great set to incorporate some naked stuff. You know, really getting some edges and creating some leverage to get some things where you can move the launch point, I think that's a good way to do it. It's getting into some of those sets. Um, do you have much rotation with your receivers or that kind of thing? Kind of depending on the concept of you did maybe a little bit more of that week. Like we we do not just have this hard set rule, hey man, if we're getting in squeeze, that you're always at this alignment. Like you're always two yards from the tackle or whatever. It's a little bit dependent on, you know, what are we carrying that week out of squeeze stuff, condensed stuff, and, uh, you know, kind of building it from there for that game plan. You know, kind of have a general rule for them, but it's not like this, hey, it's got to be this one. There's a little freedom, a little more flexibility to it based on what you're doing. What do you typically carry into a game plan for the week as far as different drawbacks, screens, et cetera? Um, it's been different. You know, every – Every offense that, that I've been a part of as an assistant and, and a few years calling, everybody's different. But in general, open field wise, maybe maybe five, maybe six dropbacks. Maybe. Uh, you know, and then probably about three to four quick games that you just love. And then, you know, from there, try 
got to decide on how many play actions they use, screens, you know, and, and for us, like, if they're on the open field script, like, that's one of our plays. If we don't try and manipulate it, we're, we got all this other stuff, and all of a sudden it really truly adds up. Like, if it's one of our 25 or 30 plays or 32 plays or whatever it is, like, and that, that's one of our babies that week. So we got to really like it at the beginning of the game. Like, you know, yeah, in general, five, six dropbacks probably, three or four quick games, two play actions, two screens, maybe one naked, kind of the general outline, but then it just kind of depends on what type of team you have and what you're facing. But I'd say something about like that. Oh, with Leach? <laughs> with Leach? Uh, yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, I mean, the, the short answer is uh, two runs, maybe. The rest is self explanatory now. Yeah. shooting for. Um, pretty limited red, <coughs> red zone script. I mean, maybe maybe five plays on red zone, maybe. You know, you always just got to have enough of, for us, just kind of that tight area, right? I mean, that's when it starts to get a little more specific for us. So for most teams, kind of 12 and in of kind of what your plan is there and having enough throw game. And, hey, man, it's third. It's a down where you know you got to throw, just having enough bullets there for, for throw game, probably. Um, maybe three goal line plays. And then, uh, you know, maybe you know, probably five, six, you know, third down longs, maybe three third mediums, maybe three third shorts. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty trim. Um, 